Well, well, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that's been coming up for me in my life with people asking me what camera they should go for. And the main question it's come down to is, is it worth going for full frame? Or should I go for APS-C? Should I go for crop sensor? Well, what better time than now to talk about why you might go for which one, the difference is, what's going to happen, what it's all about. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, like I said in the intro, we're going to talk about APS-C versus full frame, why you might go for each one, what you get with each one, what the differences are. I think there's a, a general kind of feeling that full frame is better than APS-C, and I totally get it. I totally get it. I guess in a lot of ways, we all aspire to have a full frame sensor, full frame camera. It just feels like then we're kind of proper photographers. But what about the advantages of APS-C? And is there really a massive difference? Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about which one is right for you. Let's talk about the pros and cons, because there are pros and cons of each type. So, okay, what is full frame? What is APS-C? What is the difference? Let's start there. Well, essentially, we're talking about the type of sensor that lives within your camera. And this is important because it affects a lot of different things. A full frame sensor is physically bigger than an APS-C sensor. So even if they have the same number of pixels, the actual size of the sensor is different, is bigger on a full frame sensor. And this results in a lot of different things with regards to the look of the image and the way that you're able to use the camera. It also can affect actually the size and, and the weight of the camera as well. And generally it'll affect the price as well. So the most obvious difference between the two sensors is the crop factor that is applied. Because the APS-C sensor is literally and physically smaller than the full frame sensor, it essentially crops your image. It zooms it, if you like. It's a bit more zoomed in. And this is usually by a crop factor of 1.5 or 1.6. And what that really means is that whatever focal length you use, whatever lens you put on your camera, if you're using an APS-C camera, you need to multiply that focal length by 1.5 or 1.6, depending on what camera it actually is. That means that, for example, 35 millimeters on a full frame camera will look much more like 50 millimeters when you're using the exact same lens on an APS-C camera because it's cropped in. So for example, right now I'm shooting on a full frame camera. I'm shooting at 24 millimeters and this is the full frame using the full sensor. And then this is what it would look like if I was using an APS-C sensor, exactly the same lens, everything else exactly the same, all the settings the same, it's just cropped in. Right? So it just effectively gives you a crop. Now, initially that might seem like a negative and it can be, right? It means that things can be a little bit tighter with regards to how you are shooting. And it just depends on how you want to shoot as to whether that's a problem or not. With full frame, whatever lens you use, 50 mil, 85 mil, 24 to 70, that is the focal length you're going to be seeing. Whereas with APS-C, it's always going to be a little bit tighter. However, that's not always a bad thing. It's not always negative at all. And especially in certain genres like wildlife, nature, sports, that can actually be really helpful. So if you're shooting wildlife and you want to get more reach out of your lenses, having an APS-C camera can actually be really helpful because it's actually going to let you get in closer to the animals you're photographing on the same lens. 500 millimeters, for example, which is nice and zoomed in, is going to look like 500 millimeters on a full frame body. But you pop that on an APS-C camera and that is actually gonna give you the full frame equivalent of 750 millimeters. Same lens, same settings, but you're just more zoomed in. And if you're shooting wildlife, nature, sports, something like that, where you wanna get in nice and close with a telephoto lens, you're getting more reach out of that lens. All of a sudden, 100 to 400 actually works more like 150 six hundred. Now this crop factor plays into other aspects of how the image is going to look. So for example, depth of field. Now depth of field is affected by whether you're using a full frame camera or APS-C in a couple of different ways. But most notably, if you're framing your subject in the exact same way, you're using the same lens on both cameras and you want to frame them up in the same way, you are actually going to have to be closer to your subject 
using the full frame camera. If you're using a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, that's going to feel much more like a 75 millimeter or even closer to 85 millimeter, depending on whether it's 1.5 or 1.6 times crop. And that's going to mean you're gonna to need to be slightly further away from your subject to frame them in the same way that you would on the full frame camera. And that act of actually being closer to your subject with the full frame camera can mean that you end up with a shallower depth of field. You can have a slightly blurrier background. So even though both cameras might be using the same f-stop number, so let's say they're both shooting at f4, let's say they're both shooting at f2.8, you will likely end up with a slightly blurrier background on the full frame camera rather than the APS-C camera if you're framing your subject in the same way. And that's purely because you're getting closer and so that focal plane is gonna be different and the depth of field is going to be shallower. Now again, there's pros and cons. It just depends on how you want to shoot. A lot of portrait photographers, for that exact reason, like to use full frame cameras because they want that nice shallow depth of field. They want to get that nice blurred background. Whereas conversely to that, a lot of videographers will prefer to use an APS-C or a crop sensor camera because they want a slightly deeper depth of field because it's just easier, it's a bit more forgiving for the shots, keeping people in focus through video. And that's partly why in practice, it's made a lot of sense when shooting you know, good video, cinematic quality video to use a slightly smaller sensor. It's one of the reasons that that is actually a really useful thing when it comes to video. And that's certainly something I've thought about in the past. Again, that's all the same setting, same aperture, same focal length, all that kind of stuff, but you just end up with a slightly different end result. Another area where there can often be a big difference between full frame and APS-C is when it comes to low light. If you've got two sensors, which let's say have 24 megapixels, but the full frame sensor is larger, physically larger than the APS-C sensor, those pixels are going to be bigger. And that effectively means they're gonna be better at gathering light, which essentially means they should be better in low light. Now, this has generally been an accepted thing that if you are shooting in low light, a full frame camera is going to be better than an APS-C camera. These days, 2024, technology has really come so far and you probably aren't going to notice as much of a difference. The main reason for that is that a lot of cameras, even when it comes to micro four thirds, which has an even smaller sensor, are just so good with low light now, with higher ISO values, with getting rid of the noise that you might have had to deal with in the past. It actually isn't so much of a consideration, but if you are absolutely going for low light stuff, then full frame might be the way to go. That was always the case with the Sony A7S cameras. So the A7S II and of course the A7S III, both are reasonably low megapixel counts, but on a full frame sensor. That means the pixels are nice and big. And that means they're fantastic for low light because they're just gathering so much light per pixel. And that's always been one of the massive strengths of those cameras. But like I say, it's probably not as important these days purely because technology has come so far with it. Now, something else that is affected when you're talking about full frame and APS-C is the actual camera itself, the actual body of the camera, the size and the weight. Generally speaking, an APS-C camera will be smaller and it'll be lighter. So for example, the Sony A6700, which came out last year, that's a nice, small, compact camera, but still with the performance of some of the full frame cameras within Sony's range. You know, things like autofocus, low light capability, video capability. It really is a fantastic camera, but it's just very, very small, easy to carry around. That can be a massive advantage depending on how you want to use your camera. And if you're going, let's say traveling, and you need a pretty small, compact system, well then something like that is gonna work really well versus maybe a slightly bigger full frame body. Again, this isn't necessarily as much of a consideration these days because we're all in the kind of mirrorless ecosystem, which is generally smaller and lighter anyway. So which one is better? Well, this is a little bit subjective. It definitely depends on how you want to use the camera. It definitely depends on what kind of stuff you want to shoot. It definitely depends on what you want to do with those images at the end of the day as well. There's a lot to consider there. So for example, if you're shooting wildlife, if you're shooting sports, you might find that an APS-C camera is actually gonna work really well for you. And certainly it might be an easier route to get into that genre because it'll be a little bit less expensive 
you get more reach out of your lenses. So it's easier to get started with that kind of stuff. That's also the same with video as well. Depends what kind of stuff you might be shooting. If you're shooting a lot of video, I can see a lot of use out of something like the A6700, right? Especially the kind of video that I might shoot where if I'm interviewing someone or something like that, I'm not gonna be worried as much about the depth of field. I'm gonna be able to set that up and not have to worry when I've got me in focus, is the person next to me going to be in focus as well. That's something I have had a problem with in the past with full frame. You know, you adapt, you learn, you get on with it, you, you kind of work out ways to work around it. But with APS-C, you know, set that to f4, you're probably going to be completely fine. That's generally true of full frame as well, but it's important to, it's important to keep in mind that depth of field is something to consider. Whereas if you're shooting portraits, if you want that shallow depth of field, you want that blurred background, well, maybe full frame is gonna work better for you. If you wanna be shooting wider, well then full frame is obviously gonna be the way to go. And generally speaking, I think people work their way up to full frame, right? I certainly started with an APS-C camera, with a crop sensor camera, and it was great, it was fantastic. And I moved up to full frame. Generally speaking, as long as you're sort of within the same ecosystem, you're gonna be able to use a lot of the same lenses. So for example, with the A6700, I was able to use a lot of the lenses that I use with my a7 III. Same as the lenses I would use on an a7R5, an a9, anything like that. They're all gonna just go onto that APS-C camera as well. There are dedicated APS-C lenses that you can use with the APS-C cameras, which are designed specifically for that, which will generally be nice and small, nice and light. They'll pair very nicely with that. But you've got a whole kind of stable of lenses. So if you do decide you know what, you know what, I wanna switch it up, I wanna go full frame. You've got a load of lenses already in the bank that you can just use straight away with either camera. The reality of it is, and this is especially true if you ever do a little bit of pixel peeping, which we all do, I do it, we all do it, I totally get it. But the reality of it is full frame does have a bit of an edge when it comes to low light, dynamic range, and really even image quality overall. I think overall, if that is the most important thing to you, which does make a lot of sense, then I think full frame is gonna make a lot of sense. But it depends where those images are going, right? If they're going on Instagram, if they're going on websites, probably no one's ever going to notice the difference. You might not even really be able to tell the difference when you're just working on the images. But if they're going to be printed, especially if they're gonna be printed big, and if some of those other things matter to you, then I think full frame is gonna be the way to go. So it really depends on how you wanna use the camera, what you wanna do with it, and what you wanna do with the images once you've taken them. So I'd love to know, what do you think? What is your go-to? Do you have other reasons that we've not talked about here for wanting to either go full frame or APS-C? Is there something specific to the way you use things that means, no, I would always go this way? Do you just feel a certain way about it? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments because that's super interesting. I think this is such a subjective, such a subjective thing that I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. And for anyone watching this who is thinking, you know, what should I get? Should I get APS-C? Should I get full frame? Maybe if you have any other advice that we haven't covered in this video, pop it down there. Because this is a community, right? We can all learn. It's all a good time. And I love, you guys have got such insightful comments. So yeah, pop it all down there. That's fantastic. Now there's gonna be a selection of different APS-C and full frame cameras that we use for these videos and a bunch of different stuff and some of the favorite ones over the last year down in the description. So you can go and check all of those out for yourself. We pop a list of all the kit we use for these videos as well down there as well, so you can check everything out. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video, because there's new stuff all the time. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.